Just hours ago, .NET 9 was released and I couldn't wait any longer and already upgraded one of my production applications from .NET 8 to .NET 9. I will take things further in this video by adding .NET Aspire to this existing ASP.NET Core web API application. .NET Aspire is vital for distributed applications such as cloud native solutions and it adds service discovery as well as deployment options. However, I will show you powerful features that you can take advantage of even when working with single project applications. Stick around because by the end of the video you will see how simple it is to add .NET Aspire to an existing .NET application and how many powerful features it provides. In this solution, we have an ASP.NET Core Web API project, two class libraries and a test project. In the Solution Explorer, I right-click on the main application project and select .NET Aspire Orchestration Support in the Add menu. A dialog opens where we can provide a prefix and the location for the projects that will be created. Below the form fields, we have a preview of the projects that will be created and added to the solution. I stick with the defaults, press the OK button and wait for Visual Studio to complete its work. Now we have two new projects in the solution. Let's start with the service defaults project. It's a class library and has a single code file extensions.cs. I won't go too much into details here. The comment already tells us enough about what's going on inside this file. The add service defaults extension method adds service discovery, resilience, health checks and open telemetry. In this file, you can configure .NET Aspire once you understand what's going on and want to make changes to the defaults. The app host project is the second project and sticks out with a different project icon. When we open the project file, we see that it uses a specific SDK, the aspire.apphost.sdk. In the solution explorer, we also see that this new project is now the default project for the solution. When we press F5 to launch the application, it will now start the app host project instead of the web API project. Now let's explore how the app host project works. In the program.cs file, we only see three lines of code. For a simple project like this, all we see is an instance of the distributed application builder and a project added before building the host application and running it. Here, we could configure the dependencies and services required to launch the distributed application. In a scenario with many cloud services, this file will be much larger. Now, let's run the application host to see what we get from those two additional projects. We see the .NET Aspire dashboard in a web browser. The Resources tab provides us with an overview of all services defined in the app host project. In this case, we have a single project. We can stop and restart the project and we can open its console. We can also navigate to the console tab and select one of the resources. In this case, we only have a single resource. When I select it, we get the same output as before. Next, we have the structured logs tab. Here we can filter the log statements with various filter options. When I authenticate a user on the front end of the application, we get a few more log statements. For example, we see the endpoints that are called within the Web API project, as well as other structured log entries. In the Traces tab, we see the duration of each API call. For example, we see that the authentication took over 2 seconds and the other calls are mostly below 200 milliseconds when running locally on my machine. In the Metrics tab, we get the open telemetry information. For example, we can select the request duration in the system.net.http namespace. 
When I make another request from the client to the Web API project, we can see a spike in the live graph. There are many more metrics that you can explore. Isn't it amazing how many features we got by simply adding .NET Aspire to this solution? Great, but how does it all work behind the scenes? Remember, we started the app host project and somehow the app host was able to start the web API project. In the program.cs file of the app host project, we reference the web API project. This allows the app host project to localize it and start it. That's understandable. But how do we get the open telemetry data and how does the .NET Aspire dashboard know whether the web API service is running? Git already gives it away. The program.cs file in the web API project was changed. We have two new lines. We have a call to the add service defaults extension method defined in the service defaults project. And yes, we have a new reference from the web API project to the generated service defaults project. The second new line is the map defaults endpoints extension method, which is added right after the builder builds the application. Similar to the add service default extension method, this method is also defined in the extensions file of the service defaults project. For example, the health check endpoint is registered in this method implementation. Those two new lines and the additional project reference are enough to provide all this functionality to the .NET Aspire dashboard. But does that mean that the .NET Aspire dashboard is published when we publish the application? The short answer is no. Of course, you can publish the .NET Aspire dashboard if you want to monitor your production applications. However, we have two different web applications. The app host project generates the .NET Aspire dashboard and the web API continues to exist as an independent web application. When we open the launch settings.json files in both projects, we can see that the app host application runs on a different port than the web API application. While .NET Aspire offers many features for distributed and cloud-native applications, I highly encourage you to add .NET Aspire to your existing .NET web applications to take advantage of its dashboard features. Let me know in the comments whether you heard about .NET Aspire before this video and if you will try it yourself. Don't forget to like the video and if you want to learn more about .NET development, consider subscribing to the channel and I will see you in the next video.